Stay tuned for the Joan Quinn Profiles. Joan served the state of California as a member on the Arts Council and on the Film Commission. She was formerly on the Architectural Commission and fulfilled two terms on the Fine Arts Commission for the city of Beverly Hills. As an editor for Andy Warhol's Interview Magazine, Condé Nast Publications, and the Hearst Corporation, Joan covered the world of fashion, the mysteries of food, the excitement of theater, and the international art scene. She continues to find people who are on the cutting edge of their professions. Here's Joan Agajanian Quinn. Hi, I'm Joan Quinn, and welcome to the Joan Quinn Profiles. Waiting to be profiled today are our guests, actress Vicki Lynn Reynolds and artist, ceramist Stephen Horn. Actress, singer, writer, Vicki Lynn Reynolds was born and raised in Philadelphia and graduated from Overbrook, a high school famous for not only Vicki Lynn, but Bill Cosby, Will Smith, and that tall Bill Russell, right? <laughs> was the acting and choral club there uh, a part of your curriculum? Yes, it was a um, magnet school. Oh, it was. And letting you know that I'm not a chicken, young chicken. <laughs> We started, <laughs> we started uh, gospel <laughs> choirs in the public school system. Oh, you started them yes, there? Yes, So at Overbrook? At Overbrook. And, yes. well, Bill Russell's not a little chicken either, no, is he? He's, he's been around. <laughs> when did he start there, basketball? Oh, I don't know. Now, he's, no. he's, he's a lot older than I no, am. Mean, that's, that's what I'm saying. That's what I'm saying. You yeah. can't talk about that. Mm -hmm. But you did bring gospel there? Yes in the whole public school system. Oh, and then it went all through yes. the system? Mm -hmm. I see. Were you acting there too? Well, that's where I, well, I kind of got my start. It's, like I said, it was a magnet school, so I, I was part of the theater department, the classical <coughs> choir and the gospel choir. Yeah, and I even played violin, so I was part of the Oh, you orchestra. did? Yeah. You did? Yeah. You're so musical. Yeah. And your voice is so great. I Thank heard you, you on stage at the Hudson with uh, in the Hattie McDaniel mm -hmm. play, which we're going to talk about, okay. and it's Hattie, what I need you to know. Yeah. But before that, did you always want to act? Was there acting? I would, my brother was a Tony Award winner. Uh, he uh, was Jim in the play Big River. So there was acting in your family. Yes. There was some from kind a, of showbiz. From, from a small child. I was started singing in church at four years old. <laughs> And, but my brother Ron, he used to dress me up in paper dresses. He would make dresses out of newspapers oh, how and great. do my hair out of nylon stockings. Oh. And my mother owned a, a beauty salon, which was like attached to the house. And we would put on performances for her customers. And he would do it with you. And yes. he had a he was had a great voice, probably. wonderful voice. He played piano, um, just you know, just uh, full of. Um, talent. How mm -hmm. many were you in your family? It was it was three of us. Oh just oh and yes. you lost your brother? Yes. And my oldest brother, <clears throat> he is a minister today, Dr. W. Franklin Richardson. He would we would perform and he would go and preach. Oh and he'll give a sermon. That is so <laughs> great. Your mother and father must have been so proud of her uh, family. Yes, they were. And she were. was a real worker though, wasn't yes, she? Yes. And, and your father? My, my father and my mother both were very supportive of us. They used to say, um, uh, it doesn't matter what you do, but just be the best of whatever you are. Yeah. Mm -hmm. But Hattie said that too. Mm -hmm. Hattie McDaniel was brought up to be the best of yeah. what she was too. Yeah. Um, you went to New York and mm -hmm. you didn't act. You ran a business. <laughs> How could you do that? <laughs> or maybe well, it was acting. <laughs> <What>? <laughs> Well, for one thing, um, at Overbrook, I had a dual uh, ma a major. I was business major and music major. And this is just in high school. This Did you ever go to college? School. No, I no. went. To, I went straight to work. I know. <laughs> you ran a business. Yeah, I ran a business, and then I went to Philly International Records, where um, you know, Sound of Philadelphia. Oh, you did. Yeah. But you were on the stage in New Jersey, Chicago, New York. Yeah. You were in the public theater. When did that all come about? That all came about around, and sometimes in the late seventies. Um, after I was your doing, business. After my business, 
I um, I did a a show at the that was called the Vicky Lynn Review at oh, a place yeah. called Preachers Cafe. Tell us about that Preachers Cafe. Preachers Cafe on Bleecker Street, and uh, I was there for three years. And we would have lines around the corner from bit different people coming from out of out of the country. What'd you do? I, I did. Um, it was like a club, and was it a cabaret? Act? Yes, yeah. Cabaret. So you talked, yes. you acted, yes. you sang. Yes. Did you, I did got you play it. the violin? No, I didn't play violin. <laughs> <laughs> no, I had musicians, bass, drums, guitar, and because it was a music area, we would have all different kind of musicians come in and sit in. Oh. You know, it was such a fun time, such a great time. And and that did that lead into feature films? Well, and that led to the George C. Wolfe's uh, oh play, public theater, the, uh, the Colored Museum. Yeah, oh yes. the Colored Museum. Yes. Yeah, was that that was fantastic. Yeah. So what kind of a role did you have there? I, I did five characters. Oh um, yeah. Yeah. And you were in feature films, oh, yes. and you've been on TV, yes. and you've done commercials. Yes. And um, I'm going to just say Marlon Brando now, because I don't know what happened with Marlon Brando. <laughs> but let's get him out of the way. <laughs> <laughs> well, he was, my, he was my acting teacher. Oh, he was? We did a, uh, yes, we did a, 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 a documentary called Lion for a Living. And L-I-O-N or L-Y? L-Y. Lion for a living. <laughs> like the stage, the day, right? Exactly. <laughs> in this class, it was a wonderful class. In uh, this class was uh, Sean Penn, Nick Nolte, Michael Jackson, uh, uh, Robin Williams, Whoopi Goldberg. Are you kidding? No. In New York it was? It was here in L.A. Oh, it was in L.A.? Yes, it was here in L.A. Oh, wow. Yeah. It was oh. a wonderful, wonderful experience. What an experience yeah. that you can always have. So you did um, the black, the museum, mm -hmm. the colored museum, colored museum. Mm -hmm. and then you did bring in the noise, bring in the funk. I was the, I did the national tour. What What did you do in that? This it was called the singer. The singer. <laughs> so did you dance too? No, not so much dancing. Oh, yeah, because you singing. dance on stage yeah. now. Yeah. I'm like, how is she moving, that girl? <laughs> I couldn't believe it when you got the rhythm. Did you see me? I started clapping. Oh, yes. I started it. All right. Did they do that every night when you dance? Oh, so, yeah. Sometimes. Sometimes yeah, yeah, because I thought, yeah, yeah. this is this has <laughs> got to be it. So, um, and and you did the national tour singing. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> yes, yes. Uh, bring in the noise, bring in the phone. Did, did, you weren't in Fela, though, were you? No, I wasn't in But Fela. because I thought I read in your bio somewhere no. about Fela, and I thought, oh, did I see her? Did I no. see her? Because you were da <laughs> dancing and yeah. singing. But tell me how you started. So from Colored Museum and mm -hmm. Bring in the Noise, you've always been on stage. You love that the yes. most. Yes. How did Hattie McDaniels come into your life? Because she was in film. But what I didn't know is that she was on stage a lot, wasn't oh, she? Oh, yes, yes. I she didn't realize that. I didn't realize yeah. that. But my brother, again, uh, <coughs> before he passed, he said, Vicki Lynn, you should do the life story of Hattie McDaniel. I was insulted because I was ignorant to Hattie McDaniel. I thought she was a sellout to the race and all she did was Mammy and Maid Wolves. But and that, but, but no, what you'll talk about that, yeah. yeah. And then um, I was on the set of Polly and... Uh, friend of mine, his name was Larry Riley, he said, Vicki Lynn, sit down. If nobody approaches you with the idea, if nobody writes it for you, you write it yourself, but mm -hmm. you do the story of Hattie McDaniel. And he passed away. <laughs> That's right. You tell me. <laughs> yes. So I said, you know, these guys must be leaving me something. So I started doing research on her. And I did three years of research. Did you met somebody who knew her. Yes. My nephew. Yes. How did that uh, happen? Uh, uh, um, he knew, I was, I was, again, I was doing, bringing the noise, bringing the funk. And uh, we met up at a party in Boston. And uh, his friend uh, was t had taken me around to oh, see things in Boston. Right. And so uh, he said, Vicki, what are you doing? And I said, oh, I'm writing a one-woman musical based on the life of Hattie McDaniel. And he said, what? He said, well, come here, let me, let me introduce you to my partner, because oh. he's partners with Edgar Goff, Hattie's niece. Oh, the, his, the nephew? Yes, yes. And The one that I talk about in yes, the show. Yes, and you, you learned a lot from him. I learned, I, I got the, the connection from um, this 
the man that was there, he was there Saturday, Tanya Hart's husband. Oh, is that right? Yes. Oh, yes. so that was the connection? That was the connection. But tell us what I need you to know. Mm -hmm. What does that mean? It's kind of a mouthful, Hattie, yes, what I need you to know. It's what Hattie needs you to know. Because when I... Hattie right needs you to know? Yeah, Hattie is what... what, she, what the play is about is what she needed you to know. I that, see. You know, oh, so I you, see. You so know Hattie she, speaking. I yes, need you to know, to know this. Exactly. I got it. Because I laid on her grave and talked to her before I started writing the play. That's so phenomenal. Yeah, and uh, you know, I got all kind of vibrations. And um, when I left her, I felt like she was saying, "Go ahead, girl, do that." You know. So, so, what did she want everybody to know? Well. I think pretty much of what I have in the play, um, more She's, of her personal life to get to know her, yeah. not what you, not what you, what not what she was left you thinking with the it, Academy it, Award, yeah, which at that, that time was a plaque. Yes, absolutely right. It yes. wasn't an Oscar, right? And that's what I'm trying to do now is get her her a statuette. That's what you should do. Yes, because it's housing. important because we all think that she was. Best Supporting Actor uh -huh. in Gone with the Wind, uh -huh. Actress in Gone with the Wind. Uh -huh. And she wasn't a sellout. No, she opened doors, right? right? Oh, my goodness, yes. You, I mean, you you didn't know all the things that you learned about when you came to see no, the show, right? I loved it. Yeah. And, and the thing that I loved about it was the way you carried the show. Mm -hmm. Who was your director? Byron Nora. And you think He's you fabulous. need a director? Oh, my goodness, yes. Yes, it really, um, and Byron is so talented. There's five different places, and mm -hmm. you move around, mm -hmm. and you use the lights, and you use music, mm -hmm. and what I love is the slides. Mm -hmm. The projection. Where did you get the projection? Where did you get those pictures? Um, one picture, the group picture that I showed you with Louis Armstrong, and that was fabulous. That uh, came from Sherwood Schwartz. Oh, right, yeah. and he's in it. Is he yes, in it? Yes, he's in the picture. In it too. Yes. Right, right. Yes. He and did. and the songs are original, yes. some of them, not all, all of them. All but two, St. Louis Blues and Smile are the two, of course, I didn't write. And and the thing that I love, that song, I did my best and God, and God did the rest. rest. Don't give me no credit, that's what it's called. Don't right. give me no credit? credit yeah. And what are the, what are the words? Um, I don't feel no great personal pride for my contribution to the world of art. My course was charted a long time ago. Don't give me no credit, because I did my best and God did the rest. I know, that's so, it's so moving. And when you start singing it, like chills are going up everybody's spine. <laughs> um, you're fantastic. Thank you. You read, you do poetry. Yes. You dance. <laughs> you sing. <laughs> uh, and you're an angel in the end. <laughs> That was great. Who did your costumes? Oh, Kevin Mays. He's amazing. And you're like pulling and pulling. Yeah. How do you do that all? <laughs> I, it just all came together. You know, it just all came together. And it, and it, it it's all working in a wonderful way. I say pulling and pulling because there's a lot of Velcro. Velcro you yeah. jump in and yeah. you jump out. <laughs> and the wigs yeah. and the hair. Yeah, yeah. really look great. <laughs> well, I congratulate you. Thank you so because much. Because you've been working on this for, what, seven years? Seven years it took me to write it. Oh. Now, this is the 13th year altogether that I've been... Um, and it's, with, and it's honed down from seven characters to just you. Yes, yes. And you play all those characters. <laughs> yes. I think it's really clear. Thank you. And thank you for being a guest. I'm glad to glad that you invited me. Thank you. And we thank Vicki Lynn, and we go on to talk to Potter Stephen Horn. Hi, I'm Joan Quinn, and welcome back to the Joan Quinn Profiles. I'm here with artist, professor, Potter, Stephen mm -hmm. Horn, who was born and raised in Indiana, earned an MA and MFA from Cal State Fullerton, <coughs> taught ceramics in colleges all over, and is now a full professor and chair of the art department at Riverside Community College. His ceramics work has been on view in many galleries and museums, including AMOCA, which is the American Museum of Ceramic Art, mm -hmm. 
in Pomona. So tell us um, about Amoka a little bit and then tell us about George Orr. <laughs> oh wow, okay. Tell us uh, about Amoka first. Tell you about Amoka. Amoka is, well for me I'm a member of the museum, I'm a patron of the museum, and I'm an artist who's exhibited in the museum so I get to kind of come at it in all directions. You have it all, right. Yeah. You're yeah. lucky that you are a ceramist and part of the museum. Exactly, and that it's in Southern California. And it's in Pomona, right? It's in Pomona. It's a fabulous <laughs> space. It's an enormous museum. The uh, owner of the, I guess we'd call him the owner, Christy is the director. Christy the owner, Johnson. Christy Johnson. Dave Armstrong is the I don't know, owner, founder. patron, founder, founder, yeah, all of those things. I think he's things. the founder, yeah. Right? And David has done an amazing job. He has a, a premier collection of ceramics from all over the world. Oh, he started collecting ceramics himself. Mm -hmm. I see. Yeah. And so they have a permanent collection. They have a permanent collection. Recently they've been, uh, because of the move to the larger space, they've been <coughs> given other collections by people who are, you know, either retiring or uh, just kind of willing their work to the museum. So it, it's really increased. So it's they have a, a only ceramics collection. Only as far as I know. Basically, yeah, as far as basically. I know. Yeah. But you were in a show called George Orr uh, and other Mad Potters. Other Mad Potters. You don't right. look like a Mad Potter. No, no, I don't. <laughs> <laughs> That's the beauty of it. <laughs> Tell us uh, about that. Why did they call you a mad potter? Uh, well, partially because my work at that time was <coughs> kind of inspired by George Orr. <coughs> and George Orr was a turn-of-the-century potter who did really unusual work. I, 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 would, I would call him the first modern artist in, in America. But he I, was, when was he? Uh, 1890s, yeah. yeah. And, and his no work wasn't him. discovered, yeah. I know, no one yeah. knew who he was, Oh, right? no, no, nobody knew he was. He, his work was not, uh, you know, I mean, he sold very little work in his lifetime. At, at the time of his uh, death, his son stored probably eight or 9,000 pieces. Unbelievable. Unbelievable amount. And then that's what the, when they found it? Mm -hmm. Yeah, and it was found by, I think if I got this right, uh, a collector of auto parts, uh, oh, Cadillac right. parts, <laughs> and he bought, purchased the majority of the work. How did you get influenced? What was, were his Good influences question. on your work? His and influences. Do I have a picture of anything like that? Oh, well, sure. Like, uh, this piece right here would be excellent, right? Uh -huh. So if you look at that piece, it's, <coughs> it's, it's kind of twisted, the form's dented, the top's pinched and folded in, the handles are almost like metal, wrought iron metal, you know, kind of formed, and the piece is very thin. It's, um, oh, it's thin? It's very thin where, you know, like it's thrown on the potter's wheel uh -huh. and then altered uh, after the piece oh, is firmed Because it out. looks heavy. It doesn't look like it's no, thin. No, it's the walls super thin. thin. Yeah. Really? Like you pick it up and there's like hardly any weight to it. Uh, and then what about the colors? George on his pieces. Or, yes, right. on Orr's pieces. But the color doesn't look like anything. No, my glazes are different <laughs> in that I'm, I'm just kind of have a different interest in surface, I guess, you know. So th on that piece, it's very metallic and copper. It looks like metal. And uh, some of the pieces look more like... This piece. Well, is that one, piece? that's my favorite piece. I and, love this. Uh, and the glaze is just a matte black surface. And I really like how that works with the form. But it has the pinching, as you say, and exactly. the turnings, and yeah. uh, and it's thin as well? Very thin. So I call it, you know, it's kind of controlled collapse. So <laughs> the pieces are almost not going to make it. Many of them don't, you know, so. Oh, because they're so fragile. Because they're fragile and thin, and that's kind of the but fun thing. But they're all thing. fired, right? Oh, yes, yeah. They're fired quite high, like it's called stoneware. So it's uh, <laughs> very hardened clay you know but like any ceramics it's easily broken you talked about the glazing do you have to be a chemist to to yeah it's helpful do you make your own glazes? i make almost all of my glazes um so that's part of the 
of the work. That's part of the art. That's yeah, and that's for me. That's the scientist part. Yeah. You know, which I enjoy being at that moment, and I like working with the clay. That's a different kind of part, and then it all comes together. And then there's the person who, you know, I fire the work, and the firing's a big part of what happens. And when you teach in your class, because mm -hmm. you teach, um, do you teach your students that? Can they learn that, or is that all part of your own body I, I language? I think so. Well, I mean, I, I show some of the those techniques, and some people will use that. Uh, it takes, like, a lot of years of practice to throw well on the potter's wheel. I kind of never yeah. could. Yeah, it takes years, you know. <laughs> I could never hold it there. It really does. And sometimes there will be students that have been around for quite a while, and they've picked up a lot and developed a lot. But can they be influenced by different things? Do, do the glazes get have a different influence? To, uh, or, mm -hmm. I don't know. I mean, well, you're influenced by surfing. that's a good question. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. See, so. Yeah, for me... That's like all the stuff that I've done is like a passion. And I think the most important thing is that we kind of, you know, transfer that knowledge and passion to the students. And once in a while you connect with one who's just like, you know, has those same interests. And what is that surfing? The, the um, water or the movement or? I think it's the energy. Oh, the you know, energy. That, the kind of <coughs> energy, the dynamic of, you know, riding waves and, it's really about the practice and the discipline. It takes lots of practice to be a good surfer. It takes a huge amount of practice to be a good artist or, for me, a potter, you know. Uh, there's lots of skill sets that you just develop. Yeah, what should we call you? Should we call you a potter I like a ceramist? Potter. I like potter. potter. I don't always make pottery, but I really like that term. And what is the difference here? I mean, po Arguably, you don't make pottery. I don't know. Yeah, I don't know. A potter is somebody who uses the wheel. Yeah. Oh, which I, I do. I, I use a, a lot for a lot of um, most of my work, but not everything, you know. And so I kind of connect to that from from that standpoint that I'm using the potter's wheel to generate these forms. Right? When you came out of school, mm -hmm. did you decide to be a potter? I mean, were you working That's in That's a really good question. Yes. <laughs> you uh, were? Yeah, I mean, uh, uh, the first class I took at a community college, which was in the 60s right and I instantly just went wow you loved it. I love this you know I, this is what I want to do you know without any kind of other thought and it, and I was a biology major oh. <laughs> and I dropped that you know that was not hard to do but and my father was very upset <laughs> he's gonna be a potter yeah instead he's gonna of be a, a potter right. <laughs> so but it was pretty it was a really rapid connection and I spent a lot of time in the studio learning to throw you know, they had this, there's always this push and pull about uh, pottery, potters, mm -hmm. ceramic art, um, being a, a form of uh, craft and right. not fine art. Right. But Ken Price had a show at LACMA exactly, yeah. and at the Met and at the Nasher Gallery of his pottery or his pots. Mm -hmm. um, and they deemed it as fine art. He did right. a lot of drawings. Do you draw before you do your thing? I used to draw a lot of what my ideas were. Yeah, that's... And now, you know, there's just like so many years of ideas <laughs> that, you know, you realize you just like, you don't have time to do everything. So I don't real. I just sit down. I, I have focused ideas, but I don't draw anything. But any, you don't draw not what that you're going to do. So no. you don't plan what you're going to do. Not too much. Well, do you call it... it if you draw something, do you think it's called fine art, or if you're? At I the see what you're getting at. I don't yeah, know. I do. No, I think that, you know, the, the art part, for me, uh, this is what I tell my students anyway. I say art is inside of the artist, and sometimes it's in their work, right? It should and, be in their and work, and it should be. It's not always there, but <laughs> but sometimes, uh -huh. right? So if it's printmaking, pottery drawing, painting, <coughs> sculpture, it doesn't matter what the medium is. The uh, aesthetic issues are, you know, if they're there with the work, then I call that art. Then, right? then it's art, so, yeah. so we're... Yeah, that's how I look at it. just mincing words. I yeah, guess, I think right? so. Yeah. But the museums had a different... Mm, they, they have their head up, you know, where... Oh, okay, right? okay, okay. I mean, Good. they have. 
<laughs> they have. But yeah. they're starting to change. It's changing, yeah. Before we go, tell us about this. This is so beautiful. The glaze is so beautiful. It is beautiful glaze. Um, it looks like glass, ah. you know, and it is kind of glass. That's yeah. what glazes are, some glazes. And that cool. piece is made like I used to blow glass. And so it has kind of a, the beginning of the piece is on the bottom, and then the ending oh. is actually on the top. Ah. So I work upside down first and then How reverse big is it. it? If they're, most of the pieces are small, like maybe 10 or 11 inches. Yeah, it's really beautiful. Yeah. Thank and you. then, Thank and you. this one, does the top come off? Yeah, that's so a lidded form. So this looks form. like, what you say, pottery, something useful. Yeah, utilitarian yeah. or functional is right. the word I use. But, right. but, but is it? It could be. <laughs> you know, I, I don't really use things like that. I make the objects more for visual purposes. You could call it decoration. I think that's where the craft issue comes in. Yeah. They'll say decoration, <laughs> right. but, you know, but no, you know, like, I'm really influenced also by ancient Etruscan art and Minoan art. But those and, are all like pieces of glass. They've oh, been gorgeous. buried for years, yeah, right? right? And they come out with that yeah. that glaze or patina exactly. or whatever it is. Yeah. So I really feel like, you know, those were the art. That was art, you know, in the B.C. times, right? I can see that yeah. influence. Yeah. yeah, that was art. And, and we're, thin. And thin and delicate. Right. And it was, uh, the aesthetic was for visual beauty, right? Yes. Yeah. So, so I, I think thank that's you it. for bringing beauty to us You're today. You're most welcome. <laughs> I appreciate your uh, invitation. Thank you so much for being with us. And thanks for watching the Joan Quinn Profiles today. Keep writing. 777 South Figueroa, 44th floor, Los Angeles, 90017. And email me like you've all been doing, J-A-Q-U-I-N-N-1 -N at AOL.com. And we'll see you next time on the Joan Quinn Profiles. Thank you, Stephen. You're welcome. Thank you. This is beautiful. We're out. We're out.